So Apple just released a new version of iPadOS 16 beta, but depending on which one you're on, it would either be iPadOS 16 beta 9 or iPadOS 16.1 beta 3. I know the naming is kind of weird because Apple segregated and separated the iOS updates to the iPadOS updates, but at the end of the day, they're the same exact update. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about what's new, if anything at all, and also really test out Stage Manager to see if it's actually made any improvements because from a stability standpoint, it really wasn't there about two to three weeks ago. So without further ado, let's talk about iPadOS 16 and see if it's gonna be ready for October. Let's do it. So let's jump right into this video, everybody. If you did watch my iOS 16.1 beta 2 video, then you'll notice that some of the features are the same. But again, the naming of iPadOS is a little bit different this year because they did break it up for the first time ever between iPadOS and iOS. So iPadOS 16 developer beta 9, which is also technically iPadOS 16.1 beta 3. So it's kind of the same thing, but again, they separated 16 and 16.1 between iPadOS and iOS. But in terms of update size, you're looking at about 409.2 megabytes. So give yourself at least one gig of storage, of open storage in order to get this installed correctly and it installed fairly quickly, fairly easily. And then in terms of build number, this is actually a great example of the iPadOS version and the segregation. So here it says iPadOS version is 16, but when you click into it, we're actually on 16.1 technically according to the system data. So this version is iPadOS 16.1 and the naming is 20B5050 lowercase f. And as you guys know, with these beta updates, the closer and closer we get down to D and then C, B, A, and then finally dropping that last letter, that's the indication that we will be getting the RC editions. We are still a few weeks away from getting the final release of 16.1, but be on the lookout for a weekly release of these betas until the October event when a new iPad ideally will release and hopefully a new M2 iPad Pro with a bunch of new stuff. But that's a topic for another video because we do have some leaks and rumors that we want to talk about eventually. So I know that most people want to see Stage Manager in action, but first let's talk about some of the small nuances that did change with this beta 9 or this beta 3 update. So first one, is going to be in screenshot. So if I take a screenshot right there, you press on the screenshots themselves. Firstly, you'll notice that there's two screenshots and that's because we are connected to a monitor up there using Stage Manager, which we're gonna touch on in a second. But the new update has to be when you press done right here, you have a couple new options. Firstly, it's the copy and delete. And then also it is how this is actually arranged with these new icons on the right hand side. So this little section right here is new, especially the copy and delete, which is a nice little added bonus there because normally when you take a screenshot, it's usually to send to somebody else and you don't wanna save it into your camera roll. You take the screenshot, press copy and delete, paste it into whatever messaging system you use. And then just like that, you're good to go. The next one is actually more of a foreshadowing. So if we go into our settings and if you go into your general, which we are in right now and you scroll down, you actually get this little section for matter accessories. Now matter accessories is gonna be the new universal norm for smart home accessories in order for connectivity to actually happen. So here you can see matter accessories listed above have been added to the connected service. This can also be added to additional services with an app that supports matter. So if you press edit, you actually can't really do anything right now because again, I think they're just getting ready for everything to happen. And then even when you press on the learn more, it doesn't allow you to do anything, whether you physically tap or whatever the case may be. They're just getting everything ready to go. The next one is still in your settings. If you go into Siri and search, you actually have the call hang up button. So now you can actually say, hey blank, hang up is supported during phone and FaceTime calls. For me personally, this is something that I'm not gonna use too much because I don't really need to tell Siri to hang up for me. But again, it is an option if you want it to toggle on. By default, it's turned off. If you wanna to toggle it on, by all means go for it, but we're gonna keep that off for now. The next one has to be shared library. So Apple announced shared libraries back with 16.0, but it actually didn't release to everybody quite yet. And they're gonna release it with a 16.1 update for everybody on iOS and iPadOS. So the way you access the shared library, firstly, is you go into the settings, go into your photo settings, and then you have this new shared library section. You have to go through the setup process, which is very simple, very self-explanatory, but then once you have that set up, then you're good to go with a shared library. Now, keep in mind that the owner of the shared library is the one that's going to be taking up space out of their iCloud for these images. So if you are invited to a shared library from somebody else, that person is the one that's gonna be taking space out of their iCloud for those images. But one more thing that I did wanna show off was sharing with the camera. I like to leave this on a manual mode. So share manually just means that every single photo needs to be decided by me whether or not it's gonna be added to the shared library versus if you share automatically, that means every photo you moving forward that you take will go into the shared library. And then if you go into your actual photos right here, there's actually a little icon right here on the right hand side, top right. So if I move over, you can see it more clearly right here. If you press on that, that allows you to move that certain image into the photo library or into the shared library, which is great to have. 
And then you also have that option in the three dots right here, which is move to shared library. Very easy and self-explanatory to do. The next one is actually pretty interesting with multitasking on the iPad itself. So if I go into a split screen view right here and I have two apps side by side, normally when I click on the three dots and you hit split view, it'll move that one out of the way. But now this one, actually, if you press on it, you get a little new little icon right here for left split or right split in order for you to move them back and forth. So I thought that was worth noting. It's just a new little feature, I guess, or a new option inside of the multitasking window when in split view, which I love to have. And then lastly, in terms of what's new, if we go into our settings and we go into accessibility, which is going to be right here, and after accessibility, you go into touch and then assistive touch, you actually have a new option called use game controller. So this is for somebody that wants to use a gaming controller to control not only your iPad OS, but your iOS device as well. And there's a new learn more section, which really explains everything a little bit further in terms of how you're gonna navigate the OS with a game controller if you need to, which is great because again, accessibility is feature sets to get more people access and usability on these platforms and on these hardware devices like an iPad, like an iPhone. So this is great to have the more the merrier in my opinion. So now let's actually zoom out and talk about Stage Manager. So as you all know, if you are iPad users and you've been wanting this Stage Manager feature to work, then you'll know that actually Stage Manager has been the one thing that has zero stability or at least very little stability over these beta updates. If you just use Stage Manager on your iPad and if you just use your iPad on iPadOS 16 and 16.1, for the most part, it's like 99%, you know, performance ready. It's ready to go. There aren't many issues. There's not many bugs. It doesn't reset. It's not until you go into that secondary monitor support where things start to get a little bit wonky. So the first thing we're going to show off is just opening a couple applications. So let's open up Safari here. You can see that two of them opened. And the reason two of them opened is because I had two open previously down here on the iPad itself. So it does keep that in terms of persistence. So one thing that I did learn is to bring up the dock again when you have these full screen applications open like Safari. It's the same way you bring up the dock on multitasking when you're using it on the iPad. So just grab your scroll or your cursor right here, pull it down with a little bit of inertia, and then it does bring it up if you do it correctly. So I'm gonna move this over here. We're gonna push down here to get the dock. Let's say, let's open, let's bring out, you know, Twitter, if you guys wanna bring out Twitter. And again, the stability is getting there little by little. It's nothing too crazy and I can move Ideally, I should be able to move this stuff in here, which again is not working. So there's some little nuances that just aren't perfect yet or they are inconsistent. So for instance, one lack of consistency is if I, I can't move to the left and get that menu to pop up. Normally with the last update, the same way that I pull up the dock with a little bit of inertia by pulling down, sometimes it doesn't work. So again, Apple needs to fix and make sure that everything's persistent all the way through. So it's not a complete learning curve every single time I open up a new application or again, update the iPad itself. But if I pull down here, let's pull up YouTube, which is great. YouTube works very, very well. Another thing to take into account is that everything does default to whatever speaker is on the actual display itself. And you can't actually make the main speaker system from the iPad your speaker when using multitasking or when using a stage manager. You have to actually use your headphones if you wanna have any other audio source and Bluetooth headphones for that matter. Some other things to try out are to maybe move the application. So if I quick click on here, move to display, Every now and then it works, every now and then it does break down, so it's not perfect. As you can see, that time it did work. If I press this button again, move to display on top, that does work as well, and then I can drag this over here. So you can see that sometimes on the left-hand side, stuff opens up how it's supposed to, but again, it's not perfect. And we're, I think we're calling that the persistent shelf, but one thing that I do love is the ability to use things like LumaFusion in full screen and be able to customize it how I see fit. So there's LumaFusion, make this bigger. You know, I can extend this all the way to take up the entire screen press these three dots to add another window if I want. I can minimize it, I can move it to the iPad. So let's press that. Again, that doesn't work. So there's a couple of things that don't work right now. Again, the zoom button doesn't work because again, I am fully zoomed in, so that button shouldn't even be visible. But overall, Stage Manager is getting there, as you can see. This entire time, there's been no spring reloads, which is something that always happened whenever I was dealing with that secondary display. In a spring reload, it's just when the screen goes black, you get that little circle on the iPad itself, and then it just resets itself for you to be able to use it. So that is Stage Manager in a nutshell. So far, stability is improving. Let's just hope by October, whenever the release of iPadOS 16.1 does happen, it's working for everybody, no matter which iPad you have, whether it's the M1 Air, M the 11 inch M1, the 12.9 inch M1, or maybe an M2 14 inch iPad Pro, which hopefully will be coming. And then the last thing I wanna to touch on is battery life. So let's quit out of all these applications. And as you can see right here, there's still some ghosting of multitasking in the multitasking bar. You can get rid of them, but they kind of stay there and it's a little bit broken. So little things like that, little nuanced things that shouldn't be happening are happening. But if you go into our settings, let's full screen this because it makes it a little bit easier to see. So we'll full screen that. Let's go into battery life and see how we're doing from a battery perspective. So over the last 10 days, we're doing about two hours and 36 minutes of screen on time. 
but on a day like Wednesday, five hours and eight minutes and took up a little under 100%. So I'm getting around five to six hours of screen on time on a single charge. On a day like Friday, three hours and 43 minutes actually took up over 125%. Why that is, I don't know, but a day like this, five hours of screen on time, almost an hour of screen off time, we took up a little less than 100%. So battery life, five to six hours on a full charge on the M1 iPad Pro that I've had since day one, could be a little bit better. I really wish we could get to that eight to 10 hours of battery life. But you can see the applications that are taking up the most amount of battery are things like LumaFusion. So two hours of LumaFusion use took up two thirds of my battery on that Monday. But that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, iPadOS 16.1 Beta 3 or iPadOS 16 Beta 9, whatever you guys wanna call it, is actually making some stability improvements overall. The amount of times that I go into that springboard reset has actually decreased significantly. There's still some little nuanced things in Stage Manager, which again, don't really have a detrimental impact in terms of your day to day, but it's just little things that shouldn't be happening and things that should be more persistent in terms of feature sets and how you actually navigate with Stage Manager. So I'm sure Apple is getting ready. I think we're about five to six weeks away from the official iPad OS 16 release to the entire public. And unfortunately, like most people know, this is an M1 exclusive feature. I wish they could bring it down to more iPads. But again, if you are an M1 user, then you're gonna have a lot of fun with this, especially if you're the type of person like myself that wants their iPad to be their one and only computer. But that is gonna do it for this video. If you guys did enjoy, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so that I know you made it to the end. And leave some comments down below about what other stage manager aspects or what other iPad OS features you guys wanna talk about or want some more explanation on. We will have a full walkthrough of iPad OS 16 when it does release to the public. So definitely leave some comments down below of what else you guys wanna see in that walkthrough to make sure that we cover everything. But, but that is gonna do it. If you guys wanna watch some more iPad OS, iOS, and iPhone 14 coverage, click on one of these videos right here and we should be getting the Apple Watch Ultra and the AirPods Pro 2 here very soon. But until next time, I'm Fernando and I'm out of here. Peace.